I bid thee farewell. We're bound off for Greenland and ready to sail in hopes to find riches in hunting the Hi everyone, Tom Loria here, and here is Mystic Seaport in Mystic, Connecticut. And I have something to tell you about, and I couldn't think of a more fitting place than Mystic, uh, with the Charles Morgan in the background and me sitting in a whale boat, than coming here and telling you about it. What I've decided to do is, sort of in response to your comments uh, over the last year or two about doing a whole project from start to finish. And originally, I always thought that that was going to be too big of a commitment, but I've started to rethink that and started to see some of the uh, good points in it. One is that you guys will get be getting steady content on a fairly regular basis. So, uh, what's this series going to be about? It's going to be about building a whaleboat, a beetle whaleboat, start to finish. This boat that I'm in is a Beetle whaleboat, Beetle-built whaleboat. Uh, James Beetle was a whaleboat builder in the 1850s through, the, through that second half of the 19th century in New Bedford. Um, and his boats, there are a lot of his boats around. As a matter of fact, the boats hanging behind me on the davits were built to plans from a Beetle whaleboat. Uh, so uh, it's an historically significant piece of our maritime history. And I thought it would be a good idea to take a deep dive into that. So, what's the course going to cover? It's going to cover things like the concept of the way I approach a subject, um, explanation of the methods and the techniques and the materials that I'm going to be using, which I will try and keep as non-technical as possible. In other words, I want, to, I want this to be the kind of thing that almost anybody could build, regardless of what tools they have or don't have. I'll try very hard to do that. The chronology of the project, my particular chronology is going to be different from other people's. So I want to explain the reasoning behind what you see and the time in which you see it. It's evolution over a couple of hundred years of Yankee whaling. Setting a target date for the boat is very important because it will affect many of the things that we will build for the boat. I'll go over resources and places to find information and there are tons of those so you'll have no shortage of information on this. We'll be paying special attention to things like the oars and the individual pieces of the whale craft, the harpoons, the lances, the paddles, the boat hooks, all the stuff that they carried in these boats and my god there was a lot of it. So we've got a lot to cover. Now, I don't have any specifics on how many episodes this will be or how, over what period of time, all of this thing will be released, but I can tell you that it's going to be quite a while. So, settle back, make some popcorn, make a sandwich, make a day of it. Um, you'll be able to see this whole project start to finish, regardless of whether you ever decide to build one for yourself. I think it'll be something that contains a lot of useful information in just model ship model building in general. So, with that, we're going to get started, but I'm going to also ask you to hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Definitely hit the like button, because that really helps, and hit the notification button so that when I release a new video, you'll get notified in your email. Now, let's get started. As I said earlier, there's no shortage of info to be had on whale boats. There are books, film, and of course the internet. So the snag you may hit is not where to find all this info, but what's going to be relevant to you as a model maker and what's going to be accurate for the target date of the model you want to build. Let's start with the books. 
There are five books that I found that are pretty essential for this kind of a project. They are Whale Ships and Whaling by Albert Cook Church and Sperm Whaling Out of New Bedford by Elton W. Hall. Now these first two are fairly similar and they're filled with photos that model builder can troll for much contextual data. Having one or the other is good, but having both is even better. The next helpful book is Harpoons and Other Whalecraft by Thomas G. Lytle. This one's going to be hard to find, and it's very expensive. But it will let you geek out on the evolution and the chronology of the tools of the trade. You could bypass this one as long as you supplement it with the first two and then the next two books that I will cite. And the next one is William Ansell's book on the whaleboat. And this is published by Mystic Seaport, and it's readily available. It's only $25, and for $25, it's minimum investment for a maximum educational return. The last, but by no means the least, is Eric A. R. Ronberg Jr.'s book, which he wrote specifically for model builders, titled To Build a Whaleboat, Historical Notes and a Model Maker's Guide. This is the book he wrote when he developed the New Bedford Whaleboat Kit, for the model shipways company back in the mid 1980s it features a 1 to 16 scale delano whaleboat now there's too much information in this book to take the time to list here suffice it to say that if you want a high degree of historically accurate detail in your model there's much to learn from this book written by one of the leading experts in the field now as for the internet i will only say that it can be as much a curse as a blessing. Unless the information you find comes from a reputable source, like museum sites or historical societies, that kind of thing, tread carefully and try and verify all your findings before including them in your work. Now, I've found that films, in a limited capacity, to be helpful. You've got to account for artistic license taken by Hollywood, but in this video alone, I've used footage from the 1922 movie Down to the Sea in Ships, and it chronicles, in part, a sperm whale voyage out of New Bedford, and it contains quite a bit of material concerning whaleboats and whalecraft. There are a lot of contextual data that you can find here. You'll see whaleboats, what they look like in actual use, and the sizes of the harpoons and the other whale craft and the way they were rigged, and that's pretty important. And there's a lot of detail to be ferreted out from these grainy frames, so look carefully and look often. And a bonus, you can find the movie right here on YouTube, uncut. Now, basically, there are two ways to go about getting yourself a hull. The first is to build a plank on bulkhead hull, then take it off the forms, you know, the bulkheads, and then frame it up. This is the way that the real boats were actually built, and it's the method used in the model shipways kit outlined in Eric Ronberg's book. With careful attention to the details during the building process, you can end up with a very realistic looking model. Not to mention you get the bragging rights to say you built a plank on frame model. The method Eric describes in the book will work for just about any small craft, with a little adaptation. So whether you're building a Delano boat, a Beetle boat, or a Leonard boat, the method is unchanged. The second way is to carve the hull out of a solid block of wood. This is the method I've been using for the last 30 years. Now, about now, some of you are probably saying, oh, wait a minute. You take a 12 by 4 by 2 block of basswood, and then you carve away 95% of it? Is this really the best way to go about this? Well, yes and no. Yes, because I've done it so many times, it's second nature to me. I've become quite fast at it. And, yes again, because I build whaleboat models in four different scales, from as little as 1 to 64 up to as large as 1 to 24. And this method scales pretty easily. Now, one of the essentials for making this method actually work is for having the very sharp, even scary sharp chisels and gouges. Fortunately, I don't mind sharpening, so it's no big deal for me. And the no part 
is that carving just isn't as faithful to the actual building practices and relies on the skill of the builder to produce a hull that is accurate both inside and out. No small feat when you consider that even at the relatively large scale of 1 to 32, the hull thickness has to be a consistent 1 64th of an inch, 15 thousandths, almost 16 thousandths, fairly consistently. There are places where you don't have to be that accurate, and indeed it's even better to leave more material in those selected spots for increased strength and stability, but I'll go over all that in later chapters. Now having said all this, I have to admit that after carving some 55 whaleboat hulls, I'm a bit tired of it. So after this project is finished, I'm going to try building a planked up hull. Maybe at 1 to 24, maybe larger. But that's another video series. The plans I use for my whaleboats are from Mystic Seaport. They are of the boat built by Charles Beadle, son of James. You remember James from the introduction for the Mariner's Museum in Newport News, Virginia. I chose this particular boat for a number of reasons. One is, it's never seen use or weathering. And two, at the time the plans were drawn, 1975, the boat had spent 40 years in the lap of luxury as a museum exhibit and was probably the truest in its shape. And the third reason is, Charles Beadle obviously knew this was going to a museum and he may have been a bit more careful on the fit and finish. Boats like these were meant for use in the trade, were not expected to survive very long, so they were not always that carefully built. The Mystic plans are drawn one to one, one inch to one foot. So I took them to a place that reproduces blueprints and builder's plans and had them reduced to the scales I needed. I have an all-in-one printer for my computer, so I can scan the copies and the plans and make as many copies as I need to make all the templates that we'll need for this project. The copies are glued onto a piece of Bristol board with spray adhesive and then carefully cut out. In preparing to make the templates, we have to first get a symmetrical plan view, like this one. Something the plans, as they are, don't give us. If you have some kind of photo editing software, it's not very hard to do. Here's how we get what we want. So here we have our plans and you can see the profile, you can see the station lines, and you can see the waterline lifts on this half of the plan view and on this side you see the diagonals. What we need to get a usable template so that we can trace the shape of the whaleboat and really have it come out symmetrical is we need to get this lower half separate it, flip it vertically, and realign it with its other half. So we're going to do that. And we're going to start by opening up two new blank documents. So you come up here to File, New, and for the size, I'm going to go to Inches here, and we're going to want it, actually, yeah, we'll leave it just like that, 12 by uh, 13. Okay, that's one. And then we're going to do the same thing again. New. 12 by 13, and we'll create those two documents. Okay, we go back to the first document, and what we need to do at this point is um, get the polygonal lasso tool up here. And now, this is for Photoshop. Uh, I realize everybody doesn't have Photoshop. You can take this to some place that reproduces graphics or reproduces um, uh, blueprints or anything like that, uh, and they can do this for you. But if you have Photoshop or some other similar form of uh, photo editing, you can use pretty much, you, you can do this whole thing just like this. Um, might be different commands, but it will get you the same result. So, the first thing we need to do is make a careful selection right on the center line outside the body of the boat. Right there. Now, with the polygonal lasso tool, I can go like this, and it doesn't really matter. I can go off the screen, and it will pan right for me. 
and when I get to the center line again off the boat at the other end at the bow end of the boat I want to very carefully select that and left click there anchoring down so now I've got a line that exactly cuts the boat in half and we're gonna make a selection of that by going over this way and then panning back to the left or the stern we're gonna chop off part of that tiller but that doesn't matter we'll deal with that in a minute and then we're just going to double get close here and then double click it makes the selection we have no feather on this at all we want a nice crisp crisp sharp edge so now we've got it and what we want to do is we want to copy that so we're going to hit control and C and we can come over to our first blank document and hit control and V and there we've got half of it let's zoom in a bit so that we can see that all right let's uh, let's get the eraser and get rid of that tiller we really don't need that we're gonna leave that center mark that's what that is right there and we're gonna take this now and uh, we're gonna put this in the next document we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna hit control and V zoom in I think you by now you probably see where I'm going with this we're going to eliminate that and then we're going to take uh, we'll just make a small selection here so that we're not copying all of this white as well and we're gonna go up here to image hit image rotation flip vertical and then we're going to copy that and we're gonna go back to that other document there and paste it in here so here we have both halves sitting on top of one another that's no good so you grab the move tool and again I'm gonna zoom in so I can see really clearly what I'm doing because the alignment is the key here so now we're gonna move this up until we get both halves and Photoshop very conveniently will align things for you with these magenta lines and you'll see when I go out of alignment it disappears when I go into alignment it comes back and you'll see a center line in the magenta color as soon as I get close enough there it is let go and now we've got an entire whale boat symmetrical both sides we can print that out and then use it to make a template and then use the template to cut out that shape of our boat and there you have it I know I said in the intro that I was not going to make this about what tools you have and you don't have and I've already mentioned an all-in-one printer and photo editing software yeah way to keep it real to sorry I'll try and do better but I think that that's probably the end of the higher end stuff you'll need and you really don't even need it because you can go to Staples or Office Depot use their copiers and do all of this there so you don't even really need to have this stuff anyway now that we have our symmetrical plan view we can make all the templates we'll need there is a plan view and a profile with the station lines clearly marked very important we have the keel template and this is an important, well, 
they're all important but this one is important because our whale boat does not have a flat keel it's got a slight curve to it making it look sort of like the bottom of a rocking chair it's a small detail that can be easily missed but it makes an enormous difference in the overall appearance of the boat or the model so this template is essential to keep us on track there are nine station line templates that will guide us in the shaping of the outside of the hull and then this last group of templates have nothing to do with the shape of the boat but they are templates that make the building of the components they represent much easier quicker and most importantly more consistent from model to model take note of that small piece of wood with the step in it that's the template for the frame spacing there are two different spacings for the frames at the ends and the thwarts there's one spacing and between the thwarts there is another and having one marking gauge for both is very convenient and I think this is probably a good place to bring this video to a close there's a lot of pretty dry information here and you can only take so much of this stuff at once but looking ahead to episode 2 we'll deal with the order of construction I usually follow and the templates we made in this video will start earning their keep and we'll actually cut some wood and we'll make something that's all in the next episode and much much more to come after that so remember hit the subscribe and notification buttons and of course the like button too that's very important it helps people find these videos so until next time thanks for watching now get back in the shop